hello and welcome to my channel please like share and subscribe if you like this video and thank you all so much for watching thank you thank you thank you to my day ones twos and threes thank you to all my new subscribers that's coming in that means well thank you so very much i appreciate you all and welcome 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 this video is for entertainment and educational purposes only so everything is alleged some is not and the fair act use is in my description box y'all so let's get to it y'all let's get to it so this is the prime example y'all of just how busy satan is right now okay so i want y'all to listen to the story that's coming out of north dallas okay y'all Dr. Ronaldo Ortiz has been found guilty of injecting dangerous pharmacy stuff, y'all, into IV bags at the Baylor Scott and White Surgery Care in North Dallas. This makes no sense, y'all, because you mean to tell me that somebody will risk their career, go to school to, to do all this training, pay all of this money that it costs to go to school for this kind of position, and lose it all because you want to harm people when you go to work. This makes no sense. The 12 person jury returned guilty verdicts on all 10 accounts. Okay, y'all, all 10 counts. The jury reached a guilty verdict after about seven hours of deliberations. I'm surprised they even took that long. So Ortez was wearing a mask and showed no emotion as the verdict was read. There were 11 patients who suffered, suffered cardiac emergencies and a fellow doctor, uh, Melanie Casper, passed away from the IV bags. Y'all just don't even make no sense. There's no closure. My best friend is gone, said John Casper, Dr. Melanie Casper's widower. Okay. Shortly after the verdict, I don't think he ever looked me in my eye. It's almost like you have so many emotions, you can't sieve them out. You get flooded. This is what he's saying. The video captured Dr. Ortez repeatedly placing IV bags in a warmer minutes before nurses took bags out of the same location. Minutes after the bags were used, patients suffered cardiac emergencies. This is sad on so many levels, y'all. You are already in the hospital trying to get care. And you mean to tell me somebody would want to see you suffer in that way. And it's supposed to be a doctor that's supposed to take care of you. Now, they're not really saying who were the victims of these doctors or whatever, whatever, whatever. Because he probably... Most likely didn't know or get, didn't care where the bags were used. But, you know, a lot of people is questioning the fact that could it have been people of a certain race that he was going after or this and that and, that and this. I mean, if it was people on that floor, then you have to think about who were the majority of the patients on the floor at that time. But still in all, it doesn't matter whoever it was. This is no way to go out. You're going in a hospital to get help, not to be taken out. Prosecutors said that Dr. Ortez turned IV bags into poison bombs that exploded on unsuspected people. Over the course of the case, prosecutors established a potential motive for the tampering. They believed that Dr. Ortez was retaliating for being disciplined in 2018 and again in 2021 and 2022. If you got to be disciplined this many times, then maybe he should have been fired, y'all. I'm just saying. In May 2022, records show one of his patients had to be resuscitated with CPR. Y'all, they should have knew something was up. And why do they have cameras if they don't have security watching them? I just don't understand that. It has to be somebody that's sitting in the room watching things. So that just in case stuff like this even happens. The prosecution said that Ortez's two businesses were losing money and faced even more financial trouble if he was stopped from practicing at the Baylor Scott and White Surgical Surgery Care in North Dallas. 
Prosecutor said that Ortez put the dangerous pharmacy stuff in the IV bags to try to show emergency situations happen to a lot of doctors. So maybe he thought that if they went into, you know, you know, cardiac arrest and this and that and this, the bag would go up, I guess. You know, you can get to charge people more. A lot of hospitals do it, y'all. People be, you know, well, and they still be trying to keep them another day so they can just run up, you know, your medical cards and everything else. So it's a possibility that this is why, you know, they said that he was losing money somewhere else. And, you know, he was trying to cause more emergency so that, you know what I'm saying, they got to use more stuff if somebody is, you know, getting well or something like that. And then all of a sudden you go into cardiac arrest, then that you, you got to pull out the big stuff. This is sad on so many levels, it don't make sense. Ortez's defense team tried to poke holes in the prosecution's case, saying that there were videos of many people in the facility handling IV bags and that other medical conditions could explain the emergency. This is why I don't like lawyers that stick up for criminals. You know, you are just as worse as they are when you're defending them. But I know that's their job, but still and all, sometimes you got to play devil's advocate and turn stuff down. I'm just saying, y'all. Okay? Witnesses called to the stand in the case included that the anesthesiologist who discovered the IV bags were to blame for the medical emergencies, a team who went into a cardiac arrest during a nose surgery, and the widow of the doctor, Melanie Casper, who passed away after taking an IV bag from the facility's home. This is ridiculous. Dr. Casper passed away after treating herself with one of the IV bags at home when she was sick. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Do y'all know that they probably wouldn't have even knew what happened, be, you know, until this happened to her, that she took this bag home? This is probably when they started digging. In the trial, her widow testified how he tried to revive her with CPR before paramedics arrived, but was, but was unable to revive her. She went her whole life not being the center of attention, worked behind the drape of operating rooms, Casper said. Casper said that the past two years have been a struggle without his wife. Time stops. If you are lucky, you have a lot of friends who have he, who can shove you along. I've had many good friends. They've done exactly what was required of them. I thank every last one of them. This is what he's saying. Casper said one of the most difficult moments of the trial was seeing this newly released surveillance video of the doctor filling up large syringes with a mix of different stuff, y'all. Okay, pharmacy stuff. Him filling the syringes in the pre-op room. You can transpose what he did to Jack that day. To my wife, tough to see. This is what he was saying. Then he put the syringes in his pockets. The video was taken the day before 18-year-old Jack received one of the tainted IV bags as well. His doctors testified he nearly passed on the operating room table. Between um, May and August 2022, there were 13 patients who experienced similar unexpected cardiac emergency. Prosecutors only charged Ortez with causing serious bodily injury to four patients in August. Y'all, this don't make no sense. This makes no sense. Was they trying to, like, cover it up just so they, the hospital wouldn't be, you know, have a spotlight on them? But this is ridiculous. They're saying that's because those are the patients that could tie Ortez to through the surveillance video. Okay, so that's understandable. The director of Bay... Baylor Scott and White Soja Care testifies the cameras had only been installed in May after a break-in. Okay, that should have been in there, though. That's a hospital or a doctor. You're taking care of people. You should always have had surveillance. I'd like to give a thank you to whoever was breaking into the surgical center so they could install the cameras because they wouldn't have existed otherwise. I don't understand why, but this is what he's saying. Casper said he is thankful Ortiz would no longer have access to patients. <sighs> Get to know your anesthesiologist. They are the ones keeping you alive on the operating room table while the surgeon is doing their businesses, he added. 
Y'all, um, may the patients that um, had to deal with this mess, may they all rest in peace. Condolences to the family. And y'all, um, I told you, I tell y'all all the time, stay prayed up. That's it. That's all you can do because how would you know this? You wouldn't know this. But, you know, people that work at facilities like this, they got to start being nosy. They got to start paying attention to the patterns. You know what I'm saying, y'all? That's another thing. People, other people that work with people like this, you gotta. They, they show signs that something is wrong. It's off about them. You just gotta start paying attention to people, okay? But anyway, y'all, please like, share, and subscribe if you like this video. And thanks for watching, y'all. Peace.